Hello. Today's topic is virtual reality. There's much to say about virtual reality, and the first thing that I want to suggest is to distinguish virtual reality from another thing that's coming, which is augmented reality. So the difference between those two is in virtual reality, the topic for today, um, it's a closed world. It's an alternative world where there's no evidence of the real world. And this is usually accomplished by having black, dark glasses that cover your eyes and your ears so that everything you see is virtual, synthetic, artificial. And the power of that is that you can really feel transported to a different place. You put this on and you very quickly can feel you're absolutely at the edge of a volcano, standing there, feeling the heat, being blown by the wind. Or you can absolutely feel like you're underwater in a submarine two miles below the ocean surface or on the moon. And so the trans teletransportation, the teleporting, is very, very powerful. And the immersion that you get is absolute. So that's the power that virtual reality has. Augmented reality, on the other hand, the see-through glass, is that you see the real world and you have everything layered on top. And so you aren't trying to be somewhere different. You're trying to be in the real world, but you're just trying to enhance it, augment it. So virtual reality, the one where you have a completely artificial world, that power can be used in many ways. Um, it's obviously a fantastic way to be entertained. You can not just watch the Game of Thrones, you can be in the Game of Thrones. You can not just see another planet, you can actually be on another planet. And the question often comes up is, well, if it seems so real, can, we be, can you be confused? Could you, if you spent so much time in virtual reality, would you at some point not be able to tell that it wasn't real? And I suppose maybe in the future, 100, 100 year future or more, maybe they could get so good where they could have the sense of wind and smell and other senses that you might really be convinced. But I suspect that the resolution of the real world the real thing, gravity, being able to lift things, will be so hard to replicate that for a very, very long time, you will always be able to tell if you really cared. Now, lots of times you don't care. Like, we're watching a movie. If we were really good, we might be able to tell which parts were computer generated. But we don't usually care. We don't care that much that the stuntman is doing the stunts instead of the actors, or that it's a CG virtual character. Because we're in there for the story. And so a lot of the times, we may be able to tell, but we may not really care to tell whether we are there or not. So, so the issues about reality really have to do with how much do you care about it. I think if you do care about it, you'll always be able to tell. There'll be some hint, some way in some glitch in the matrix that will suggest to you that you're in an artificial world. There are other challenges that we get from these virtual worlds. And um, the first thing I would say is that I have tried these and been trying them for 30 years. And as cool as it is to see a world that's an alien planet or underwater or some virtual underground place. As cool as it is to be able to have an object that's magical that can do things that you can throw back and forth and have it turn into gold, as cool as those objects are, those worlds are, the most compelling content, the most compelling experience in these worlds, in the virtual worlds, are other people. Now, those people may not even be real. They may be computer-generated, or they may be real people. But our need as social animals for having contact with other 
humans and having relationships is so strong that that is the primary attraction in these other worlds, these virtual worlds, is interacting and having relationships with other beings. And because these are social relationships, they're going to have all the same benefits and challenges that relationships in the real world happen. So we can expect the same kind of difficulties. So we are not going to make a utopia. We're not going to make a world in which we can kind of eliminate all the biases, all the inequality that we see in the real world by having these imaginary worlds. There may be some idea that, well, we can we have a chance to start again, so we will make a world in which there isn't racism, where there isn't sexism, where there isn't inequality, and we'll make a better world. I don't think it's going to go in that direction. I think that these artificial worlds will have baked into them biases, discrimination, um, all the other difficulties, inequalities that we have in the real world, but they'll just be a different type. They will give us a chance to try and redo things, but I think the way that they do them is not by eliminating some of the old patterns, but by uh, giving us new tools and new opportunities to be more than what we were before. And I think that these are not utopias, these are what I call protopias, where things are a little better. They're a little tiny bit better because we've understood some of the problems and we can deal with them. We have some tools, but we're not going to eliminate them. We're just going to deal a little better with them. And so this idea of protopia rather than utopia means that, yes, a lot of the challenges that we have in the real world today in social relationships, they're going to continue in the virtual reality world. We can make them a little bit better. We can reduce some of the harm, but we're not going to eliminate them. We're still social beings. It, we're flawed, imperfect social beings, and that's going to continue. We can work on them with new tools. We can overcome some parts of them. But because we live in the real world, our virtual world is going to have a reflect a lot of the same unexamined inherent biases that we don't, not don't even aware of. And we see that in AI already. We make an AI, and because we it's training on the same data that we have in the real world, it is biased simply because the real world is biased. That's just the nature of reality. So we're not going to make utopias in these virtual worlds. They're going to be flawed. And um, there's often a question about, uh, well, you know, if, if it's virtual, does it count? Right? So if, if, if I kill you, in a virtual world, is that murder? Right? I mean, if, if, if I hurt you, if I chop off your head, and you die in a virtual world, is that, is that like dying in the real world? And the answer is kind of. The answer is kind of. It's, it's that, um, yes, you can do harm to people. Yes, you can hurt people. Yes, you can reduce their options. Those are all negatives that we don't want to do. And while it's not exactly the same as taking someone's life because that's once, it is, there is harm. So it may not be equivalent or parallel, but there is harm. And there may be new kinds of harm that we don't have here in the real world that may be, they may feel as severe or more severe in this virtual world. So there will definitely be crimes. There will definitely be uh, ways of harming people. There will definitely be things that we don't want. There will be things that we consider bad. And it's actually not hard to do bad things. And those bad things are real. So even though they're virtual, intangible people, we don't have 
bodies. We can still feel pain. We can still feel hurt. We can still feel marginalized, insignificant, diverted, lessened. And so those things will continue and all the kind of social structures that we've had in this world to try to deal with that, to try to even that out, to try and lessen it, we'll have to continue in, in, this, in these virtual worlds. We will need police. We will need rules. We'll need social etiquette. We'll need politeness. We'll need all the same kind of tools that we have in the real world operating in these virtual worlds. So they aren't utopia. They aren't hell, they're an extension of the real world. They're, we can make them, if we want them, a little bit better because we have a chance of making new tools. But they're going to have a lot of the same kind of patterns that we have. And so I think a lot of the social innovations that, and social inventions that we've made over thousands of years will continue and we'll move those into the virtual worlds. And some people won't like that because there'll be a lot of rules about what you can do and not do, what you can say and not say. And maybe there will be out there in a corner somewhere, some kind of a world where people say you can do anything you want. And that works for a couple of years and then pff, they, they fall apart. So, and then people who like that kind of no limits will move to the next little area, frontier. And I think it's good, actually, that there be somewhere on the planet where you can do whatever you want and don't have to follow rules. Um, I, I think you want to have that frontier somewhere, particularly as the planet becomes more global and we have a global governance. I think the VR worlds will be a place where people can actually live out this idea of not having limits and not being told what to do and not having to ask permission. So I think there should be some places where you can have some sort of an, an anonymous relationships, but I think you should keep them small, and they're and they're not very sustainable over the long term, and they're dangerous. But that danger is actually kind of good. We we want to have it. We want to have that place as as for people to try things, and so um, uh, the rest most of the worlds will have lots of rules and laws and. Um, it's unclear whether there'll be different countries with different VR versions, nationality, ethnic varieties. We could imagine that. That's a possibility where some people are more comfortable with certain types of behavior and other people want to go other kind of worlds. With language translations, we may not have the language barrier, but there still may be cultural preferences. That's not too hard to imagine, at least in the beginning. So I think, in general, my vision for virtual reality is um, there'll be huge diversity in the kind of places that we can go to, imaginary planets, other galaxies, um, alternative versions of animals on this planet, but that there will be maybe a kind of a convergence in the social dynamics of how you behave inside these, what's allowed or not allowed you, you know, like not, you know, eliminating another player uh, be, beyond what the game allows or um, having to uh, play fair or having to follow the rules, whatever they may be. I think there's going to be a lot more of that kind of um, social cohesion and social etiquette than many people might believe. So I think it's going to be basically an extension of our societies today.